This is John Cameron with Gray Area, where we make it our mission to connect house music fans from across the globe. And today I'm speaking with Kyle Walker. How are you doing today, Kyle? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks. You know, I want to talk about your recent releases, but between kind of the deeper sound of All You Need and like the relatively techier sound of Strut, I feel like you covered a wide range of the house spectrum recently. What do you think influences your creative direction? Is there, is there something that would, you know, kind of push the dowsing rod that makes you choose one over the other? Uh, I just feel like I'm so scatterbrained all the time. And so like, I'll listen to like somebody like for all you need, for example, like it was like, I was listening to a lot of Jane Thompson and like the UK sound Okay, I was getting inspired through that. And then for strut, it was like, oh, well, I'm super into like the solid grooves style like right now. So I'm going to like try and work on something like that. And then I guess I could try and incorporate my sound, like whether that's through the drums, the synth, the bass, whatever that be to like make it my own style. But with inspiration from from these other artists i see is there are there certain hallmarks of your sound as you as you kind of think of like what the kyle sound i try and yeah i try and keep the drums pretty coherent throughout my works i feel like that and then uh like arrangement also i try and get creative with arrangement whenever i can but i feel like with house music it's kind of like a math equation almost right. with arrangement so yeah yeah, I've heard other producers say that. And yeah. in the past couple of years, you landed on some really established house and techno labels, you know, like labels like like Tool Room or Glasgow Underground. <clears throat> How does it feel to get stamps of approval from these kinds of tastemakers? Uh, definitely something I didn't see ever like happen. I like, it's so weird. Like I started way way back making like dubstep and yeah switching then to like bass house and now into like the more techie style of house um and yeah it's just like even when i was like working on music like that i always saw these labels releasing such cool like house music never really thought getting on the label would ever be something that i would do but now here we are so i guess if you just keep working at it it's eventually going to happen kind of thing yeah definitely and you started producing music when you were 13, right? Yeah, just like on like, I don't even know what it was. It was like this weird workstation where it was literally just drums and like huh. was just, you could just make a drum beat. I think it was like for hip hop or something, but uh, I eventually stumbled across FL Studios and then just been, been using that ever since. I see. So you're mainly a, a Fruity Loops, or I guess it's now FL Studio, but you're mainly an FL Studio. <laughs> right, right. I've tried Ableton, and it's just like a foreign language to me. I don't know why I can't get it wrapped around my head. I see. And then was it was it a little bit later then that, you know, more of those dubstep artists started influencing you and stuff like that? Um, definitely, I would say, like, earlier in my career, it was like, you know, I think um like Skrillex was a big guy who's like oh I first heard his song so I'm like oh let's check out what this whole electronic dance scene is about and then just went down the rabbit hole of dubstep for a really long time until um Disclosure released their album Settle and that really like pushed me over the edge to be like okay I gotta I don't think I'm gonna try this like house lane for for a second see how things go so Settle was a big in like really had a big influence on you huge yeah most definitely still to this day i think my favorite house album interesting really favorite house album yeah yeah settle for sure that's cool and how much music had you made before you know there's the insomniac discovery project winner of yours claude von deeper that kind of launched your career how much music had you made before that track oh, a lot and it was all yeah. horrible it's so <laughs> bad yeah it's like hard to listen to there's like another alias i used to go by that's on soundcloud and the songs are still up but i haven't told anybody what it is and i <laughs> like i'll go back and like listen to those songs every once in a while and just be like wow i really have come a long way in <laughs> making music and you you won't tell anybody you won't associate it with your, with your no, name no, no no not at all not at all
And then, so I feel like up next, another big kind of step up for you is when you started releasing on Bite This. How did you first connect with Jaws? Or was it through Jaws that you connected to Bite This in the first um, place? So I first met Sam. I forget where like we met, but I just emailed him. I just like started emailing him music. Um, yeah. I emailed a lot of people, actually. I think I emailed like damn near like tried to like 50 to 100 people like just my music that was coming out and Sam was generous and nice enough to actually check it out and he had an ear for it I guess and really liked it and uh he actually helped like put me on to like one of my first festival plays um was always like really awesome with feedback and then he was starting this bite this label and he wanted me to be one of the first dudes on it which I was happy to do um and yeah it was really really an awesome experience working with the, the whole bite this crew i see what and what what release was that your first release with bite this uh i think it was infection okay yeah it was I, uh man at like november of 2019 or something 18 okay. i forget how long ago that was but yeah and that also one of my like first techier songs i would say i see and yeah. what have been some of the other big milestone tracks since then do you feel um well i think after that gosh i'm losing track of time now it's either after that or before that there was a in rotation release uh right the insomniac like printed label um called panic and that helped put me on to like nocturnal wonderland which got me in front of like a lot of people, which was so, so cool. Um, and then like after that, when I'm thinking, first thing that comes to mind is Zilla, first EP on uh, Repopulate Mars. Okay. Which a big splash. Everyone seemed to dig that song. And I still get those like phone requests for a couple songs on that EP, which are always fun to see. I see. And I feel like, I feel like you've gained a ton of momentum after the pandemic. Do you think there's something specific you did during the time that nightlife was on hold that accelerated things for you? Yeah, definitely just worked my ass off. Like I was working at the time in the in a pharmacy at CVS, uh, Starbucks. I was doing Postmates and then I'd come home and work on music literally like all night and then just go and repeat the cycle basically. But yeah, literally I think, I count it as a blessing in a way, I guess, just because I was able to reset my like production brain in a way to like, okay, let's sit down, write songs that maybe aren't totally club driven because the clubs aren't around. So work on the melodic side of uh, the scene or the production rather. Um, yeah. And really get like a song as a whole, not just like, oh, a club groove or a DJ tool, you know, like an actual song. So, so you feel like your sound has changed, like there's kind of an inflection point with your sound. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And the pandemic played a huge role in that. That's interesting. And yeah. people in the underground, as we call this nebulous thing that we call the underground, can be kind of quick to distance themselves from EDM. Do you feel like because you, even though I feel like you always release house music and tech house and stuff like that, but because you released it on labels like Fight This, which, you know, are, are kind of associated with EDM because of, you know, because it's Jaws' label, for instance, right. do you feel like there was a stigma attached to your name that you kind of, it, like from the earlier years of your career? Uh, for some reason, I feel like there should have been, but there never was. I don't know why. Um, yeah, I don't know what we did to uh, kind of pivot around the like EDM title, which there's nothing wrong with. Yeah. Um, there's a bunch of great EDM acts. It's good EDM. Yeah, it's good EDM. yeah. Yeah. Um, but for some reason, I don't know. I just, I feel like I never got granted that title of like EDM act. It was always kind of like underground. And I think part of that is because of social media. Like the way yeah. you portray yourself on social media can have a huge influence on how people perceive your music. So you feel like maybe 
people paid more, even like labels that are signing, like, you know, like your tool rooms and your uh, Glasgow undergrounds of the world. You think maybe yeah. they base a little bit more of their perception on you on social media than maybe going into your discography. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I would think so. That's I would really say social media, like in general plays a huge, huge role in the music industry. Almost. I, at times it's like teeter tottering, but, uh, it's like 60, 40, like social media to music. Like if you, if you have a great social media, music's not totally there. You can still have a very, very sick, like successful career. In a way that, that kind of helped you, you know, not have that stigma attached to you, but how do you feel about that in general? Just like social media or? Yeah. Just the importance of social media. 60, 40 is kind of a lot for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I struggle with it all the time. It's such a love hate relationship with, with social media. Uh, it's like a necessary evil in the way. It's awesome that people can connect with literally anyone in the world that has Wi Fi and a smartphone. Um, but at the same time, it can be pretty like overbearing where like you're thinking about it too much, maybe. And I catch myself doing that a lot. Um, yeah. But yeah, like I said, necessary evil. I see. Definitely. And what do you think about that mentality that I kind of described earlier? How there's sort of a dismissal in the underground, more recent maybe, or more commercial sounds? Um, to each their own, I guess. Like, um, the underground has like, I want to say such like a ceiling that's so much lower than like, if you open up your musical palette, I guess I should say, um, there's so much, so much more to like see than just the underground. Absolutely. And that actually, yeah. that actually reminds me in a, another interview, your interview of yours that I read, you said that you'd like to make hip hop eventually. Is that, is that still something you'd like to do? Yeah, it would be cool. Um, a guy I watch all the time, Kenny Beats, like he does these like Twitch. I love Kenny Beats. Such. Yeah. Yeah. He's, and he makes really, really good music too. So if, I mean, He's obviously like top tier like yeah. hip hop producer. Um, but to do like anything, it would be fun to like get out of the uh even if it was like a house beat or something like like the new Drake album, for instance, like it'd be cool yeah. to cool to like put some hip hop lyrics or like add more influence like that into like a house song for sure. Definitely. And do you ever think that you would return to bass music? Maybe in secret, and maybe you'd release a <laughs> that old alias. Um, I don't see that happening. I no, don't. it's just not nah. where it's at anymore. Nah, yeah, I I do enjoy it at the festivals though. Like, uh, if we ever like this last festival I did, uh, Imagine, there's a few bass acts yeah. that we just like went and enjoyed. They're still amazing time at the at the festival grounds. I see, and. I feel like we've talked a lot about recorded music as your uh, gigging schedule has obviously gotten a lot busier. What are you doing to keep DJing fun and exciting for you? Uh, never playing the same set twice. Um, always, always searching for new music. Like every day I spend probably like four hours just create digging for new stuff. And um, I always find it really awesome when like you find a song, nobody really, heard about it's not on like soundcloud or spotify it's only on Bandcamp kind of thing right. um and then you play it out and people just lose it and it's awesome to see like oh okay so this like four hours of crate digging for this one song paid off Bandcamp is the one when it comes to playing obscure music <laughs> so. yeah yeah exactly you can find a lot of cool stuff on there what what artists are releasing music that has been featuring heavily a lot in your sets lately um man i've been on this huge hot since 82 kick he's been also releasing really really good music lately um his label me deep in sound is a great great label for new music also um also frankie risardo another man who just like been releasing really really good music I always try and like fit one or two of their tracks into into my sets i see and yeah. Are there any up and coming artists, any artists that you feel people don't know about that they should know about? Um, man, I don't know if they're, they're definitely not up and coming, but I feel like they should be way bigger than they are. Uh, another 
the, okay. the uh, group. Gosh, I think they're from the Netherlands, but I'm not 100% on that. Sorry if they're not. Um, <laughs> but they, I feel like they're switching their sound up a lot right now too, to be like more live uh, incorporated, which is awesome to see. Um, another act that's actually maybe not as big as them is Joy or uh, Joy Anonymous. They've been on the Fred again tour opening up for him they're really really sweet uh live group also so i would say those two those two groups awesome and this is sort of a broad question but i feel like you know you have a unique vantage point because of sort of the two different worlds that you've been involved with what direction do you think dance music is heading um it's definitely headed to like the top 40 chart, I would say like, like billboards and such. I could definitely yeah. see like more dance records being like in the top 10 on the, on the billboards. And it's definitely a good thing for everyone, even the underground. <laughs> it's a good thing that more ears are gonna be on the scene, more eyes, more just everything. When you say that, are you talking about like artists like Beyonce and Drake dabbling, dabbling in house and that kind of thing? Yeah, just I think everyone's going to start with this wave of just having house music pro like producers come onto their albums and which in turn is just going to create more house music fans, I think. I see. And you think that'll sort of splash over into opportunities for people on a certain level of house music? Absolutely, yeah. Interesting. Okay. And what else do you think fans of yours don't know about you they might be kind of surprised to learn about you um man that's a good question i don't know i feel like i'm pretty open on social media but ah, man Any there is, that... yeah there is one thing i've always wanted to get back into which is like ceramics i used to do it all the time in high school um i got pretty good at it but I feel like once you leave that like high school bubble where like, oh, you go to ceramics class and there's all the clay there and they have the kennel and they have the paint and they have everything right there for you. Um, I got pretty lazy and just like haven't really found like a studio to go in. I see. And how long ago did you graduate? Uh, 2014, I think. Okay. God, so it's, it's, been, it's been a little while, while but not, not so long <laughs> yeah. to pick it up again. No, totally. It's definitely something I'm going to do um in the future like i see like seth rogan now does like ceramic stuff which is super cool to see um it'd be fun just like a like mental wipe just go and focus on the clay and then just don't have to worry about anything else going on in the world i see that's interesting i wouldn't have guessed that <laughs> yeah. you never yeah. know you never know until yes no totally well kyle i want to thank you so much for meeting with me today it's been a lot of fun talking to you and yeah. I want to thank everybody watching this right now for watching. And we'll, we'll talk that. to you again soon, all right? Absolutely. Thank you, Ben. Absolutely, man. Have a great weekend. You as well.